Good morning, everybody. I'm Mike. And I'm Stephanie. And we're Van Life Sheldon's Travels. Sheldon, he's our little yellow belly slider turtle. He woke up this morning in the rainforest. Today we are, where are we at? In the Dungeness area. In Olympic National Forest, up in the Washington State area, up in that little tiny little corner. We are the furthest away pretty much right now until we get up a little bit further in the Olympic loop here. We're about the furthest we could be from Florida or the Arizona desert right now. So, but this morning I slept like a baby here last night. It was just super quiet. I don't even think one car or truck went down this road yeah. all day yesterday and all this morning so yeah, it's such a beautiful area yeah so today we're actually gonna make our way a little bit further on the olympic loop we're gonna make our way out of here kind of make our way down the hill and back onto the loop and see what else we can get into there's no cell phone service here which is fine we had some movies downloaded last night and we just kind of watched a few movies if you missed the video of us coming up we actually stopped right down here to see if the salmon are running. And if they're running today, we'll, we'll, you'll see a little bit of that footage if, when we head back down. But if not, we'll just kind of keep going and see what else we can find. And if you want to check that stuff out, it was in the last video. I'll probably put a little card up in the, in the corner right here. But uh, let's just make our way and see what we can figure out today. And of course, we'll bring you guys with us. Well guys, here we go. Well, we decided to stop back right here next to the little river over the bridge where we were going to camp and see if the, the salmon were running today since we're going to right past here. But it looks like it's pretty much the same as yesterday. Sheldon did get to come out and look around a little bit more. He got to see some stuff yesterday around here, but I guess no salmon, so... We did run into a gentleman who said he saw them a couple of days ago, so we may have just missed them. I hope not, but we're going to head back out of here, head towards Squim, and keep making the loop, figure out what else we can find today, and bring you guys with us. Well, this shower right here in Port Angeles is one of the nicest Anytime Fitness is. The shower is a little small, but the water is super hot. So we're going to go hit some lunch and then make our way to the Olympic National Park Visitor Center right here in, by Port Angeles and see what we can get into there, guys. Well, after leaving that campsite, made our way here to Squim, got some pizza at the Domino's, gonna hang out, eat a little food, and we'll get back on the road. Yummy, yummy. I love their wings, by the way. Look good. Yeah. 
Well, we're right here at the visitor center. It's always nice. Today we are here at the Olympic National Park Visitor Center and this is actually the most visited visitor center in the park. And anytime we come to the visitor center, we bring our National Park Passport book and for our new subs who don't know what that is, it's a little book, it tells you about the national parks. You can go inside the visitor center and buy stickers, or you could get a cancellation stamp, and the cancellation stamp tells you which national park you visited, and the city and state, and the date you visited last year. Like last year, you could see we came here September 10th of 2018, and we're gonna go in there today and get our new stamp. Yeah, pretty cool, guys. So let's go inside and see what this visitor center has to offer. Well, inside here at the visitor center, you can get your backpacking, planning, and your permit to go in the back country. And you can also get your bear box, bear canister, actually. Please return them clean. And get your stamps stickers and patches along with some information about the park i'm also going to link our video from last year uh from when we were here last year well yes thank you very much Very nice. No, uh, we were here last year and we're just doing the same loop again and hitting all the spots we can, trying to hit new spots this year that we didn't hit last year. And that's kind of hard after you've been on the road for about four years and you come back to the different places around the country. So, yeah, yep, we've hit all four corners uh, from Maine to Key West to San Diego and all. How many national parks last year we did? I believe 15. 15 actually. national parks last year. So, yeah. So, all right. Just look around. We got to get our next stamp on our book, too. Well, like we were talking about earlier, Steph's got her cancellation passport book here. And how much are they? For everyone that keeps asking, they're almost ten dollars. There you go. This is some of the stickers you can get. You can get a full page like this, which just shows different events at, in the different national parks. And then you could also get just a singular sticker like this for your books, just like this. And then they also have the travel stamps here. So that's pretty nice. All right. I want to stamp your book. Looks like they got a couple stamps now. A Junior Ranger stamp, too. We have plenty of Junior Ranger stamps. I do have enough money to pay for my own, honey. I do have enough money to pay for my own. Okay. What about you? Sure. There you go. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is a good right here. There you go. Very nice. So September 21st, September 10th, same place. Almost a year. Almost a year. Good deal, guys. 
Mike, you asked, you know, what are some places that are pretty pretty famous here in the park or near the park? The Macaw Museum at Nia Bay is one of the world's foremost, foremost museums of native cultural history and archaeology with artifacts from a village site, Cape Alava, the westernmost point in the 48 states. Cape Flattery nearby Nia Bay is the northwesternmost point of land in the 48 states. Just so that would Western, be the furthest from Florida we could possibly be, right? Within the 48 states, that, that'd be correct. Yep. Yep. And then uh, coming down the coast, uh, no trails, oh, excuse me, no roads here, just trails and beach walking. Rialto Beach you can drive to, off of the 101 from Forks. You can also drive to First Beach, which is on the Huliute Indian Reservation. There's some trails there that you could walk to the beach, either Second Beach or Third Beach. And then it's beyond that, it's backpacking with some pretty wild coastline with, with cliffs and ropes and rope ladders and all kinds of manner of adventure uh, in order to pass in this 20 or so miles between Third Beach, Trailhead, and Oil City. The Claylock Strip here are easily accessible beaches, Ruby Beach being the largest parking lot. Yeah, that was beautiful last yeah, year. Quarter mile, you remember it. It's down some uh, a trail down to the, the rocks at uh, Ruby Beach. And all these other beaches are terrific too. Um, check out the small parking lots as well as the big ones because they lead to they all lead to beaches. Maybe a little bit more secluded, not as uh, well known and not as traveled. Exactly right. So that's that's you know an, a summary of the coastline, and then there's the famous rainforest as you go inland, the Ho Rainforest, the most famous of them all, the visitor center that had a, a remodel recently. It's rather lovely. It's open right now from 10 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. Uh, five days a week, uh, closed on, I believe, Wednesdays and Thursdays. All right, we'll have to remember that, closed on Wednesdays and Thursdays, guys, mm -hmm. 4 o'clock, so. Yep, and then it will be completely closed uh, January, February, and then reopening around March 6th. So if you come in the wintertime, just ask to, for an update on the hours. And if you need to get a stamp from that visitor center, a lot of times they bring those stamps down to one of the other visitor centers when it's closed. Am I correct about that? I've noticed that in other, other like Yellowstone can see the and, tides and the Grand Tetons and stuff. Do you do that here? Or that's, is that that's quite possible, but I won't want to absolutely guarantee it. We generally try to keep the stamps where they are, and we'll occasionally we'll stamp some pieces of paper and bring them to the different visitor centers to give out. So we got the rainforest and then you know, there's three famous waterfalls. You're welcome to join in here if you want to get closer to hear some of this. Three famous waterfalls in the park, the Solduck Falls, the Mariner Falls, and the Madison Falls are all, are all lovely. Uh, you've probably seen the postcards of some of these places. The uh, Solduck Falls looks, looks like that. Triple waterfall under the bridge. You can walk across that bridge and take the photographs. There's the Merrimere Falls, which is this one. That's the tallest waterfall in the park. It's a one mile walk uh, each way, approximately. Just like Solduck Falls, it's about a one mile walk one way. So it'll take about an hour to experience those. And the, the coming and going and the, and the take, picture taking there. Madison Falls is the third fall. It's on the Elwha River. And it's about two thirds of a Merry Mirror. It's very similar in shape, but 60 feet tall instead of 90. It's lovely and it's only a two minute walk from the road. Oh, that's very accessible for people that are have uh, handicap issues. Absolutely, for anybody. Yep, it's a 500 foot trail, it's paved, it's easy to get to. So, three waterfalls, pretty famous. I mentioned the coastline, mentioned the whole rainforest, and all the western facing valleys are rainforest valleys. And then there's Hurricane Ridge, which is the mountain view in the park. That's the only place actually in this national park where you can drive and get any kind of a mountain view on a paved road. This is a springtime shot. It doesn't look like that much of the year at all. It's just a and the peak wildflowers might be in late June or something, depending on the snow melt of the year. Now it, the, the meadows are brown, uh, plants have gone to seed, the flowers are mostly gone. But it's only a 17 mile drive to get there. It takes about 45 minutes from Port Angeles because it's a, a windy mountain road, but it's a easy road to drive. Buses go up there 
and so it's it's not too difficult. It was beautiful last year, so it is. Yeah, definitely did not look like that. It kind of had some fog in the sky, right? A little rain, right? You might come back in the winter time and, and see it. Uh, it's rarely blue sky in the winter, to be quite honest with you. But if you were to be lucky, you could see it like this in the winter. Now it's sort of halfway in between. But it's a beautiful day today. I'll drive up there. Alrighty. We were looking for the salmon over here at the Dungeon S when we first came through, where Scott and Terry told us to go look. But says there might be some salmon going on the salmon cascades, which means. All right. Thank you very much. Nice to have you here. Awesome. Take care. Well, behind the visitor center here is a little log cabin. called the DeMont Cabin. This log cabin was built in 1887, about a mile south of here by Mr. and Mrs. Elliot Benton as a home while providing up on a 160 acre government homestead. They lived in this cabin for almost 40 years. This cabin was donated by Mr. Don Newman to the County Historical Society to be used at exhibit here in Pioneer Life, the Olympic National Park, guys. I'll just kind of stick my camera through here. Kind of let you look around. Had a little fireplace. Bed. Bee bucket. <laughs> and a table. Pretty simple, but bigger than our van. That's for sure. Moss growing on the roof. Pretty cool. And behind here looks to be an old bell. Baldwin locomotive whistle and bell. The Living Forest Trail is accessible with assistance. Bicycles prohibited. And pretty much behind the visitor center here, so. And I find that most hikes by the visitor center are usually small, but they have a lot to offer. So, we thought we'd check it out. Definitely lots of ferns. Has that rainforest feel, doesn't it, babe? A good sized spider guys check him out wow you know what kind of spider that is put in the comments below we do not but look at his little feet going he's like get away get away yep Must have found something. Oh, spider and some mushrooms. Yep. 
go around this way, go the... Has a sign that says, look. Wow. Back side of the tree roots. And that's a small one compared to this one over here. Oh, look how big that tree is. That's huge. That's just a big root bed. A huge tree. All right. Pretty interesting. At least 14 feet tall. Massive. Well, I hope you enjoyed that campsite this morning and the shower, along with the visitor center and this nice hike. But I think we're going to end this little video right here. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. More content on the Patreon. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. We're going to be continuing the loop. We'll bring you with us. And hit that bell for notifications on our next video. There you go.